All right, so your GoPro footage probably sucks. So today I'm gonna show you how I do my GoPro footage. Maybe it'll help. I just figured out some things to uh, make it look a lot better. Walk you through kind of my process to make my image look better when actually shooting. And then obviously just the helmet setup itself. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but I've been getting a lot of questions on it. So I figured I'd actually make a video about it. First thing you're gonna wanna do is clean your helmet. My helmet is disgusting. First thing you're gonna need is a little alcohol swab pads. If I can get it to focus. Yeah, doesn't matter what they are. Um, some sort of alcohol swab. I'm just gonna wipe the whole thing down, cause why not? And I'll probably just clean the visor with actual glass cleaner. If you ride on the highway a lot, you're gonna get a lot of bugs. Even if you don't ride on the highway a lot, you're gonna get bugs. We'll go ahead and put this to the side for a sec. First thing you're gonna need, obviously a GoPro of some sort. Action camera, doesn't matter what it is. I know the Insta360 just came out with a pretty sweet new action cam, but that's what I'm rocking right there. It's a Hero 11, I wanna say, yeah, Hero 11. And then the next most important piece here, your chin mount. As far as the actual GoPro mount goes, this is the little guy that I use to get my shot. It's kind of a little uh, J, if you will. Um, the way it works is essentially, it just allows me to put my GoPro pretty much flush with the actual mount. Um, it's the simplest mount that I found that works. You can get them just in those little, uh, you can get cheap, you know, ultimate packs of GoPro mounts and what for like 40 or 50 bucks on Amazon, not super expensive. So there's your basic setup. Next thing you're gonna need is one of these. What these are, are ND filters. These ND filters have a polarizer on them as well. You don't really need one, but it does help your footage a lot. Basically, the simplest way of thinking about them is their sunglasses for your camera. I've heard that a million times if you're watching videos like these on how to get a good setup, but they really do make a huge difference. All you have to do if you have one of the newer GoPros, I believe it's the 9 and up, is when you can actually change the lenses. All you gotta do, take your lens, twist it off, take your ND filter, and just clip it on. And there you go, now you have an ND filter. Um, the way the polarizer works is it is directional with the sun, you're gonna have these two little lines on the polarizer. All this does, is just keep it in line with the sun. I always just leave it up there. Um, I'm not really messing with it while I'm riding. What the polarizer is gonna do, um, if you've ever had like a, a pair of polarized sunglasses before, it just cuts all of the glare. So things like car windows, water, um, on, you know, car surfaces or motorcycle surfaces, all that glare is gonna basically just go away. Now the reason why these are so important is what it allows you to do is manually set your shutter speed without overexposing or underexposing your image. So you can get the same quality but get a darker, cleaner image and that comes into play when you're setting up your frame rate, your shutter speed and getting that good motion blur. Next piece you're going to need, a microphone adapter. GoPro has been making these microphone adapters for a long time. I think it's 40 or 50 bucks. Basically it does the same thing as the media mod, but with all of the extra stuff that the media mod does at a cheaper price. Um, GoPros, I really wish they just had an audio jack in the camera, but they don't. So at least this one doesn't. So you're gonna need one of these. USB-C on one side, and then you can input your microphone jack on the other side. If you do this correctly, you won't have to do anything other than plug your mic in. So you plug your mic in, you won't have to mess around with the settings, it'll just automatically know, hey, there's a mic plugged in the camera, I'm gonna collect audio from that. One thing about these ND filters too is they are numbered. So what that means is that the higher number you go, it's usually eight, 16, 32, 64. The higher number that you go, the darker the image is gonna be. So if it's a super bright day, you might wanna opt for a 32 or a 64. You're probably never really gonna use the 64, but, and I never really use the eight either. But 
the 16 is going to come into play pretty much on most days i run the 16 constantly um you know the only time i'll take it off is when i'm shooting at night when you're shooting at night you're just going to want to use the stock lens because obviously you wouldn't wear sunglasses at night why do you want your camera to look like that so now pushing all of that aside we'll bring our helmet back into play now we already cleaned this earlier so we don't have to worry about fingerprint smudges or oil on top next piece you're going to need here is some 3m tape i just use this phone tape i've had it sitting in my garage forever and it works every time i do this or every time i need to reset up my gopro if you buy one of the new chin mounts they should come with 3m tape but this is a super old one i've had this since like 2020 and it's worked on all of my rocks so what you're gonna do is take your 3m tape and we're just gonna lay it flat across this surface um, remember you're gonna wipe this down with alcohol so that the tape can actually stick and then once you do that you can pretty much just stick it on the way that i like to do this is just grab a pair of scissors uh, cut it a little bit longer than the actual length of the chin mount and then oh. all you got to do is really just lay it on line this up fairly well nice thing about this 3m tape is that it's pretty much the exact size of my chin mount I know they make smaller and cleaner ones nowadays, but this one works just fine. So you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then you can see once we stick that on, we do have some overhang going on here. So we'll just take our scissors, trim off that overhang, and there you go. Um, it's also a good idea to maybe just spend a couple minutes really pushing this tape into the actual print itself, or I'm sorry, the chin mount, just so that we can be sure we have really good adhesion there. You do not want this falling off. I've had that happen a handful of times. It's not fun when your GoPro shatters on the highway. Now your helmet's good to go. So I'm just gonna line this up as well as I can. I mount it upside down um, just to get a larger contact patch. It's supposed to mount up like this, but I find that it has a better contact patch if I mount it up like this doesn't change the camera ang angle whatsoever so that's just how i do it and then once you find a good spot for it fits on fine i just like to take it and really just put some pressure onto it keep in mind these 3d prints i'm sorry these chin mounts are 3d printed at least this one is so with 3d printed stuff they're not going to be the most durable so you don't want to put too much pressure onto it, but you want to be sure that it is sticking and it's on there good. Now the next part is getting this microphone adapter onto the helmet. I just use Velcro. I've always used Velcro because if you ever need to take this off when you're cleaning your helmet or really for whatever reason, it's easy to do that rather than using the 3M tape that we used earlier. Um, Cause this stuff you don't want to have to take off um, cause then you have to use new tape and go through this whole process again. So I just use Velcro for this. Rurok on their helmets has this nice little cutout where you can just slot it in right there. Just stick that on, you're good to go. Now you have your camera mount, your mic mount. Now it's time for the actual microphone itself. Really, you can use just about any old microphone. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the plug on it has two rings and not three, because then you need another adapter. But as long as you have a microphone that has that, Really, you can get whatever one you want. Mine was 10 bucks and it sounds just fine. Obviously, if you bought a Rode or a DJI mic, it's gonna sound a lot better, but on a budget build, or if you're a broke college kid like me, it's easy to do that. And then what I do is I just take the cheek pads out. I'm not gonna show it right here because it's pretty self-explanatory. I take the length of the microphone, fish it around to where I want it to be in the actual helmet. Good tip. I fit it in right above the chin skirt and then I put a windsock on it, just block some, uh, some of the wind noise out. And then any extra slack that I have, I just kind of tuck it, ball it up nicely so it doesn't push against my head, and then just slot it in between the cheek mounts. And there's pretty much your physical setup. It's pretty simple. Once you go ahead and plug this guy in, all you gotta do, mount up your GoPro and you're good to go as far as that. But what really makes my footage look a little bit different and how a lot of guys make their footage stand out 
is in the GoPro itself um, on top of the ND filters. Really, that's that's all you need. It doesn't matter how you want to mount up your camera. Okay, so once you're actually in your GoPro, these are the settings that I run. Right now, I'm playing around with 5.3K at 24 FPS. I like 24 because 24 FPS is about how the human eye perceives things. I'm playing around with Hyperview. I was running on Superview, but Hyperview, I think, just gives you a more realistic view of how you see things on a bike. Um, a little bit wider, about as wide as possible. Um, I turn hyper smooth off. If you're doing off-road stuff, it might be beneficial to turn that on to kind of stabilize things, but when you do that, you're gonna crop your image a little bit. I just leave it off because I'm running on roads. I kind of want a little bit of shake. I think it makes it look a little bit more real. Here's where the magic really happens. So 10-bit I do have on because I want as much color as possible, as much detail as possible. Bit rate high, same thing. The shutter speed, this is where it really matters. So general rule of thumb with photography or videography, is you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So because I'm running 24 frames per second, I want a one, one over 48 shutter speed. That's what gives you that motion blur. Here's the reason why you need the ND as well, is because when you change your shutter rate or you leave it at auto, when you leave it at auto, it lets it correct for different exposures and different lighting, but it has a tendency to really over or under expose an image when you set your shutter speed to a particular level and you change the uh, the lighting outside so nd filters cut the lighting down a little bit preserves all the quality lets you have more manipulation with that motion blur white balance i just leave to auto because i'm not going to be changing it while i'm riding my iso i like to keep the minimum at 100 and the maximum at 800 i want as little iso as possible what iso does if you don't know is essentially when your image gets darker iso is going to kind of artificially boost the brightness of the image and when it does that it creates a lot of extra grain you do need iso for sure but you don't want a whole lot of it that your image just becomes super grainy sharpness i keep to low i think the gopro already does a good job of having a sharp image almost too sharp a lot of the time so i don't want a whole lot of sharpness Color, I like to keep it flat because I color grade my images later, my videos later. Raw audio, I keep it off. Wind, I just keep it auto. And that's kind of it. Those are the main settings there. You can play around with, uh, with 4K, with 5.3, whatever your camera can do. But it's really, it's that shutter speed that matters. And then once you go ahead, slot in your GoPro, Plug in your mic adapter. You are pretty much all set. And that right there is how you make your GoPro footage not suck. So I hope this helped. Hopefully you can mess around with your GoPro, have a little bit of fun with it and get some better image quality. Um, if you did, put down your suggestions or whatever in the comments. And um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot else. Peace.